This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Get 60% off using the link in the description. Whether we realize it or not, most of us think in terms of binary opposition. On off, yes, no, good, bad, this, that, and so on. Even if we are not always thinking one-sidedly, we are often striving to be, striving to arrive at clear, singular determinations about ideas and beliefs. Whether this is natural to the mind, culturally influenced, or both, the result of this, particularly in the modern Western world, is that we are constantly compelled to choose one thing over another. Theism versus atheism, liberal versus conservative, capitalism versus socialism, masculinity versus femininity, emotion versus reason, and so on. But what does this way of thinking restrict us from? What is the goal of absolute clear one-sided truth prevent us from understanding? Prominent 20th century philosopher Jacques Derrida spent much of his philosophical efforts on critiquing what he believed was the flawed nature of this sort of binary, hyper-rational way of thinking. In various nuanced and often challenging ways, he questioned and critiqued what it means to attach to the ideals of language, reason, clarity, and truth. And in its place, he attempted to offer a more democratic, modest, and fluid way of thinking. Derrida was born in 1930 in El Biar, Algiers, what was then French colonial Algeria. Being of a Sephardic Jewish family, as a young boy, Derrida immediately faced the negative consequences of rigid ideology as he was exposed to the anti-Semitism of the French state of Algeria at the time. Derrida would be expelled from his lycée on his first day because of this anti-Semitism. Bigotry would become a theme for Derrida as he continued to suffer from anti-Semitism throughout his adolescence and beyond. This first-hand experience of the harmful consequences of narrow, rigid attachment to ideology surely laid some of the groundwork for what would later become Derrida's philosophical views about openness and consideration of ideas in the margins. In adolescence, Derrida would be exposed to philosophy and, particularly through the works of philosophers like Rousseau, Nietzsche, Camus, and Sartre, he felt his first sense of opportunity to express and revolt against his circumstances. In 1949, Derrida moved to Paris to study philosophy, eventually receiving his master's degree in philosophy in 1954. Throughout his subsequent career, Derrida would hold a series of notable professorships, travel extensively all over the world, publish 40 books, acquire a significant degree of fame, and eventually be awarded honorary doctorates by several major universities. However, Derrida was also heavily criticized throughout his career, equally as controversial as he was popular. After receiving an honorary degree from the University of Cambridge in Boston, Massachusetts in 1992, several other prominent philosophers of the time wrote a letter to the university protesting that, quote, Derrida's work does not meet accepted standards of clarity and rigor, end quote, because in their view, he provided, quote, little more than semi-intelligible attacks upon the values of reason, truth, and scholarship, end quote. However, although some intellectuals may have believed this, Derrida was not seeking to merely dismantle philosophy into nihilistic chaos, but rather, arguably, he was attempting to reveal a much more subtle, nuanced way of evaluating and understanding ideas, language, meaning, and the very nature of reality, which arguably is precisely what philosophy is about. One of Derrida's most prominent philosophical contributions is the method of philosophy he created known as deconstruction. Deconstruction is essentially a criticism of the Western philosophical tradition, specifically that of Platonism, which was a system of thinking developed from the work of the classic Greek philosopher Plato. In relation to Platonism, deconstruction critiques the idea of there being true forms of things that exist beyond appearances that should be privileged above appearances. More broadly, deconstruction critiques the fundamental tendency throughout the entire Western philosophical tradition and Western thinking in general to think in terms of binary oppositions, where one idea is always more valuable than its opposite. Derrida saw this way of thinking as, at its best, deficient and constrictive. The aim of deconstruction, therefore, was to counter this way of thinking by reducing one's loyalty and attachment to any one idea, and instead, compel one to take seriously into consideration an idea's apparent lesser opposite. For every idea or view that we favor, there is both value and necessity in its opposite. Take, for example, the very crude cases of light and dark, sound and silence, good and neutral. In each of these cases, you need the opposite in order to comprehend the meaning of either because there are always traces of the other and the opposite's meaning. 
Likewise, in the cases of more complex binaries, like femininity and masculinity, equality and inequality, reason and emotion, like light and darkness, or sound and silence, both sides create a dynamic spectrum of flaws and merit, both largely depending on each other for either to have any meaning. For Derrida, our tendency to think in terms of binary opposition is largely underpinned by our faith in language as a means of arriving at neat, hierarchical truths. Generally, Western thinking operates on the assumption that there is a singular realm of truth beyond language that can be arrived at through language. Derrida would refer to this framing as logocentrism. For him, this way of thinking is erroneous because language is inescapably subjective and meaning is always context dependent. The meaning of words is always being affected by traces of other words and what is beyond words in a constant, open-ended play between them. We can only identify the meaning of any word by recognizing its relationship with and difference from other words, and this webbing of language and contexts is constantly evolving and disintegrating. Thus, there can never be a singular absolute truth defined by one theory because it will always fall victim to the subjectivity and the shifting of meaning inherent to language. Derrida writes, Every sign, linguistic or non-linguistic, spoken or written, in the usual sense of this opposition, as a small or large unity, can be cited, put between quotation marks. Thereby, it can break with every given context and engender infinitely new contexts in an absolutely non-saturable fashion. This does not suppose that the mark is valid outside its context, but on the contrary, that there are only contexts without any center of absolute anchoring. Regardless of whether we agree with Derrida and with this view of language and meaning and truth, we could still take a key lesson from what Derrida strings throughout his philosophy. It is in the play, the tension, and the differences between ideas where we arguably find a more holistic understanding of things, and it is arguably where we find wisdom. Of course, it is also where we find uncertainty, confusion, and ambiguity, a lack of clear binary right or wrong, good or bad, this or that which, as previously mentioned, most of us in the modern Western world don't tend to like. But for Derrida, this condition is something we should embrace and lean into if we wish to pursue intellectual honesty and maturity. He referred to this state as aporia, which means impasse or deadlock. Aporia, in the Derridian sense, is not a sign that we have made a wrong turn, but rather, it is a sign that we have acknowledged where we truly are lost beings in an infinite forest of contexts, meanings, and ideas, every instance of each casting different degrees of light and shadow upon us. Being confused and uncertain is not a sign of intellectual weakness, but it is an inevitable recurring destination on an honest, open-minded intellectual journey. Ultimately, there are no neat solutions to life, to the questions and problems that arise within it. The false belief that there are only leads us to foolishly cling on to and defend ideas with stark resistance, missing out on the potential value and insights of their counterparts. In truth, all ideas and beliefs born out of the human mind are deeply flawed. But simultaneously, most ideas and beliefs offer something, some value, some insight, some context. Derrida's work reminds us to open ourselves up to this, to dig underneath the conflict of ideas and to explore the necessity of their tension he inspires us to exhibit a sort of intellectual modesty and humility and patience. And in doing so, he arguably helps lead us to a more appropriate framework of thinking that reflects more accurately the true kaleidoscopic nature of reality. This video was sponsored by Blinkist. One of Derrida's greatest philosophical influences was Martin Heidegger, who, like Derrida, can often be very complicated and difficult to read. With Blinkist, however, by condensing over 6,500 of the best nonfiction books and podcasts across 27 different categories into thoughtfully organized and well-written 15-minute explainers, it is easier than ever to introduce yourself to big, important books like Heidegger's masterwork, Being in Time. Using Blinkist, you can explore this book and understand Heidegger's revolutionary concepts about what it means to be or exist, which Derrida and many other philosophers would go on to build off of. Or you can explore a more Eastern frame of thinking and discover concepts from Zen, explore the strange nature of consciousness and the essence of nothingness in Douglas Harding's title, On Having No Head. Understanding the lineage of ideas and thinkers can help paint a much clearer picture about what they might mean and how we should adopt them, but reading lots of big, difficult books can be very time-consuming and disorienting. 
Blinkist allows you to easily sift through and prime yourself on works of all genres so that you know exactly which books you want to read in full and how to go into them with strong foundations of understanding. And now, with Blinkist Spaces, you can add, share, and recommend titles with those close to you, making it even easier to build your knowledge and share ideas through a network of people interested in the same things as you. Whether it's philosophy, science, business, health, or almost anything, you can create a space around it and share the books and ideas you discover on Blinkist. By using the link in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen, you'll receive a free 7-day trial and 60% off an annual premium subscription. And of course, as always, thank you so much for watching in general. If you also enjoy works of fiction, consider checking out my newest novella, The Closer We Get, a short mind-bending story that explores the complexities of love and the future of human connection. The link for that will be in the description as well.